All right, so let's talk about a couple different types of images. So in your everyday work, you're gonna deal with image sequences and movies primarily. You know, most of the time that's either gonna be JPEGs, PNGs, EXRs, or DPX. Occasionally you'll deal with some different kinds of image formats, but for the for this topic, you know, we'll just cover a couple and I'll show you some examples of each. The other thing you'll deal with a lot, and especially depending on which workflow you're working in, you'll deal with movies. Most of the time those are either going to be Avid DNX movies or they're going to be Apple ProRes movies. Occasionally you'll have to deal with some other kinds, but for this we'll just talk about these the higher end codecs. So in this case I've already made a write node. I've put a path where I want it to go and I can either type that in directly or I can use the folder icon to actually navigate to that path. And as you can see I have nothing in my renders folder here. I'll hit save. I don't need a proxy output and I have no other settings. Um, in this case, and like I was talking about before, you want to render out same same. If I leave my color space set to RGB, it will actually apply a color space transform. And so things might not look the way I want them to look when they render out the other side. You know, if I want my plate and my render to match exactly, I need to look and see what my color space is on my read node. In this case, it's set to slog3. So I'll go to my write node and I'll set that to slog3. That way if I was to write that back out, or write that out and read it back in, set it to slog3, it should match exactly in terms of color how my original read was. Nuke, at least in Windows, defaults to Apple ProRes. So here you'll go and you'll set which flavor. Every show and every delivery spec wants something a little bit different. So I highly recommend you make sure that you're you know exactly what your specs are if you're outputting to a movie uh, file format. So in this case, we'll say, yeah, ProRes sounds good, 24 frames a second. In this case, we want to output 444. Usually these, these settings you'll leave empty. If you are doing some stuff where you're working with audio, you might append an audio file to this. Usually that's happening as a different process. And then there's the advanced dropdown. So there are a couple things in here you might want to tick. Um, if you're working in a show that has very specific time code needs, then this might be something you want to pay attention to, and at least know that it exists. And then I'll show you, you know, each of these actually has their own set of settings. So you can see when I changed to H.264, it gave us some different options. So it gives us a Kodak profile. We can set our quality. And this is actually a new interface for this version of Nuke. The older version gives you a little bit more old school um, set of settings. Same thing, advanced. So you can see we have some different options that are more relative to the actual compression method and how it's compressed. We'll switch back to ProRes. So we want to do ProRes 4444. Create directories is fine, although my directory already exists, so I'll just leave that off. And once you've got everything set up the way you want, you can either press render here in the right node itself, or you can use the render menu at the top. And you can render all nodes, selected nodes, which is just the ones that are selected. You can also cancel your render if it's running. Um, another way to render something is actually using the flipbook. And there is a way to use the flipbook and actually output an image sequence via the flipbook controls as well. I'm not going to get into that in this chapter. All right, so we're ready to write. So you'll click render. You'll then be presented with a couple of options here. This is something to pay attention to because it does change based on the context of what you're seeing. So your frame range. You can set global, which is referencing your project setting, input, which is actually referencing what you're viewing. So if you're viewing something that's different than what you're writing, it's really important to pay attention to that because you could, you could have it input a different frame range than what you're actually wanting to write out. Uh, and then custom, custom just lets you put in whichever, whatever you want. You also have a couple options here where you can do your in and out and visible based on your viewer input. You can tell it to use proxy. So if you're working in a proxy workflow, this would just leverage that. 
render and background. So this is what we talked about earlier in the frame server settings. If you click render and background, this is now utilizing frame server to do the rendering for you. And they've added a couple little things in this latest version of Nuke where you can set your thread limits and your memory limits directly in the render, um, directly in the render dialog. So in this case, we're just gonna render it standard. Continue on error. If you're running multiple write nodes and you might have one that errors and the others that won't, this is something that's good to leave on because it'll let everything else complete and then you can go back and look at your logs and see where your errors were. If you're worried about not rendering, if there's a problem, you wanna take this off. All right, so we'll do global. Everything else looks good. We'll hit okay. It pops up a panel that shows us our, our uh, progress. So now, and this is something I'm always pretty adamant about, is you always want to verify that your renders came out correctly. You can either do that via third party, viewing them in QuickTime or VLC or RV, some other, some other player, or you can bring the file back into Nuke. In this case, what I like to do, you could use the, uh, the read file option on your write node. I actually like to bring it in separately and really verify that it's correct. So what I'll do is I'll actually just copy my path here and wherever you click, if you single click in your node graph, the file or node will go to that point. So I clicked here, I'm gonna hit paste. So now I have a path and I can, if I wanna verify it, I can click the folder. Okay, it's there. I see my thumbnail here. If I don't wanna see the thumbnail, I can collapse that again, double click. So now I have my right, you know, my, uh, my new image sequence. We can hit play and verify that it plays correctly. We can also set this on our first input on the viewer and then we can click on our original source and set that on our second viewer. And then you can toggle back and forth between those. This is a really handy feature for verifying that everything came out the way you expect it to.